What's happening YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into the channel right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. This week on our nifty tools of the week, we've got four new tools here for you guys to check out. Everything from an awesome little seal puller to a little handheld scan tool. We're gonna go through these. Hopefully these are some things that might be able to help you guys out in your weekly careers as well. So the first tool that we're going to come to today is actually a pair of tools from Kentmore Tools. We've got the slide hammer, part number on the actual slide hammer itself is J6125-B, and the part number on the seal puller end is J3129. These pair of uh, tools here put together makes a really great combination. I use this pretty much all the time for everything from taking out front and rear main seals, pinion seals, some trans seals, getting down into transmissions for some of the little prying ends to be able to tap those out. I also use this one for getting injectors out of some of the diesels such as like ProMasters or other uh, four cylinder diesels with the injectors on the top. It helps for that one as well. Not only does that seal puller help, it also uh, actually is able to come off and the other uh, thread pitch is actually a sta pretty standard thread pitch for most seal puller ends. So other kits that you find that have maybe a bigger hook to them, I just use this specific one because it's generally a good universal one that I like to use for it. Uh, the actual slide hammer is about a two, two pound-ish, two and a half pound slide hammer. So it's not one of the great big five pounds uh, slide hammers that you guys are used to using for axles and such. This one's a lot more manageable in smaller places. It works really well all the way around and I would definitely recommend this one. Uh, it is a little bit on the pricey side because like I said it is two different tools and they are you know have to be uh, purchased separately the actual seal puller end right here from Kentmore is like right around 70 bucks if you get to looking on eBay and such they're usually selling for about 40 and then here with the slide hammer end you buy that one new from Kentmore you're looking at 175 bucks so a little bit pricey but for the amount that I've used this one over the years it's well worth that money and I would definitely recommend it to you guys Second on our nifty tools this week, we come to the Matco set of trim stick trim tool pliers, part number PCP920. These are primarily made for the push button style trim clips. It's got this nice, a uh, little bit more than 90 degree, you know, it's got about 120 degree little angle to it. And it's made for getting in underneath these clips and able to use that angle to your advantage and pry them up out of place. Now, as everybody knows in the Rust Belt and everywhere else, these things do corro not corrode, but they do get weak, brittle over time and the heads just kind of want to either break off or stay seized down in there. So the other thing that this comes in uh, nice and nifty handy is we want to zoom in right here. You can see there is a small gap opening there to them in the middle for grabbing in the middle on the, along the dowel, but further in it does have a cutting edge. So once you get that thing, if you can't get it pried up, you just want to take the head and just end up cutting it off it's able to snip it right off. It does have a nice cutting edge in there, right there on the inside portion and out here on the tip as well, with that one small hole right there in the middle to be able to grip around the actual stud of what you're trying to pry out. Now these things are pretty new off the Matco truck. I ended up getting these for right at $25. Uh, I believe if you were to purchase them off their website, they're like $25.95, something along those lines. They're really great for the clips in, on the inner fenders and along the inside trim panels as well. Or if you've got it just for multi-purpose, having the same tool out, trimming off the uh, zip ties and everything you use in there as well. Works great for that also. Definitely recommend to get you guys a set of those. 
third on our list, we are going to take from the snap-on little grab bag that I've got going on. This is the CTPP761A. This is a the micro lithium polishing grinding wheel. Uh, it does have a nice two-speed motor here for it. Speed one, you're going to max out at 3,500 RPM, where you take off the end of it. Uh, it does have a nice variable speed trigger to it. It does only run one direction, so the actual little trigger thing is actually the lock button, and then push on the right side, and it's gonna allow you to go ahead and spin it. Runs the standard 14.4 line from Snap-on. Nice two amp hour, has a decent uh, actual battery life to it. The indicator here on the left-hand side shows you from green to yellow to red where you're at on your battery life. The ends that it comes with standard, it's gonna come with the standard uh, roll lock on off there. It also comes with a different pad that you're able to stick these different buffing and polishing pads to that come with the kit. So then you've also got the two speed motor available on it. On speed one, you're gonna be at right around 3,500 RPM maxing out. Speed two, you're gonna max that thing all the way up to 15,000 RPMs. I will say in personal use with it, when on speed two, if you guys are cleaning off uh, pans or some big engine parts and stuff, grinding on some metal and steel and get all the rust off of everything, then this battery will probably only last you right around five to six minutes, which depending on your application might not be long enough for you, in which you would want to go with a plug-in electric style or an air one anyways. But for those nice easy to get into places or hard to get into places where you just don't want to have that air line or that cord sticking out, this is going to be one that's going to fit your bill. It has lasted quite well. I've had this one right going on now for right around eight months or so, seven, eight months. It's lasted absolutely fantastically. I've thrown it around, beat it around. It's worked for everything that I've had to use it for in the shop. I definitely recommend this one. Uh, pick this one up. Uh, if you get it on sale, you know, your Snap-on guy might be throwing an offer in or something, but if you want to pick it up online, this one's going to run right around $219.95 for the tool only. You upgrade to the kit with two batteries and the charger, then you're upwards of over 400 bucks. So a little on the pricey side, but for some of you guys who need the compactness and availability of a battery powered unit, this might be that one for you. Last but certainly not least on our list is gonna be our Ansel AD530 handheld scan tool. Now, if you guys remember a little while back, I did do a comparison between five handheld scanners for you guys, and the Ansel AD310 at that time was their top of the line flagship handheld model. So now they've been able to upgrade to the 530 option, and they've actually sent this one to me for testing, and I've been able to use it for a couple of weeks. It's worked out fantastically for those guys who are on the car lots doing used car inspections. You need to check through these things really fast, be able to check and see if their OBD2 monitors have run and or passed. On top of that, it's actually able to do a graft battery test as well. So that helps to keep you from having to get out that battery tester on top of things, just helps to cut out an extra step in your inspection process. So let's actually plug this in over on this Ford that I've got next to me and see what it looks like. So we've got a 2012 Ford Transit here that we're going to get this thing plugged into. So first thing that you guys come to see is the nice color screen that it does have to it. It does have the OBD2 check, the monitor check, battery, able to look up scan to, or the trouble codes, able to review your past ones and set up your system. Looking in at the OBD2, you're able to Put it in here, scans, it tells you what ECUs are active on it, and it tells you what has passed and what has not passed in the readiness monitors. If you want to, you can head on back here, you can click on the readiness monitors there, or you can go here over to the information readiness monitors as well. That's gonna tell you everything that is run, everything that is passed is gonna be in green there as well. Check engine lights if you have that available, if it's on or not. And then the cool thing about this one, it does have a battery test. So we'll click on this one. It tells me, turn the ignition off, start the detection, hit enter. Then it's gonna tell me, turn the ignition on.
and we've got it unhooked right there. As you can see, the voltage, and we'll see if we can get it to zoom in again. The voltage here, it's gonna dip down and then it's gonna max it back up to 12 volts. And if you were doing a charge system test as well, that would be able to point out exactly what you guys are wanting to see. It does not have a good, not good pass, not pass for the battery and charging system, but it does have the actual graph system test so you can see exactly what the system is doing and be able to check it out all for yourself. So I think that's something that's neat in there for you that's not just a standard scan tool. We're gonna back out of this and we're gonna go down to look up, able to put in P, B, C, or U codes, and it's gonna have all those stored in here so you can look up if it has a manufacturer specific one that doesn't automatically pop up, it's able to look that up for you. Also, this, uh, this unit is updatable via USB, so when they come up with updates, you're able to plug it in and update that one from your PC. All in all, the Ansel AD530 is a pretty decent unit. Like I said, in getting a chance to mess with it over the last couple of weeks, it's been really nice just for those quick checks on the lot. Able to see codes, clear codes, check the battery, the starter operation, have that graphed, and be able to look up any of the other P or U codes that might not be automatically detected by the tool. At $69.99, it's gonna be a pretty decent buy for you. Available on Amazon and a couple other places. I'll have the link for this one down below. I wish it would have had something with the actual battery to tell you whether it was good, bad, amperage straw. But again, for 70 bucks, what can you expect on that one? To try to have multiple tools into one, I do like that one for that purpose in itself. Finally, on this part of the show, this is where we like to do a couple of shout outs. This week, we're gonna be shouting out a nice channel who has come up through the ranks and is actually starting to do some fantastic videos. Well, we'll say he hasn't been starting to, he's been doing them all along, but we wanna give him some of that time in the light to shine. This one is gonna be Cody's Auto Diagnostics. Cody's Auto Diagnostics has been a channel out for about four months or so now. He's cleared a thousand subscribers, so good job on that one, Cody. He does everything from Pico Diag, he shows some different scan tools, has had a couple of different launch and snap-on ones out there, also has been able to do a bunch of how-to videos on diagnostics electrically, especially for your automotive field. Having that in your pocket is really great to be able to look into. He's going to be one of those channels that everybody's going to be looking back towards it from, you know, further in the future to come. He's going to have those videos. They're going to be nice and relevant, easy to follow. I definitely recommend you guys need to go and check him out. He's going to be one of those stars up and coming here in the automotive community. Well guys, that's about all I've got for you on this episode of Rust Belt's Nifty Tools of the Week. We do this one every single week where we point out the tools that I've used throughout this week who have helped me to get through my daily job and hopefully they can find themselves on their way into your toolbox as well to be able to help out. Here on the channel, we've got quite a few things going on. We've got a couple more tool reviews coming up here shortly. I've got a shipment of tools in from SP Tools that I've got to be able to try out and to be able to show for you guys I want to get some nice time in with actually using them in the shop before I give them a show on the channel but they are turning out to be absolutely fantastic on top of that we've got the Duramax build going on if you guys haven't checked that one out you need to check out some of my previous videos we've been doing some fuel and air upgrades and we've got some bigger upgrades even bigger coming out here very soon both with turbo we've got trans we've got air inlet we've got some motor stuff going on with it it's going to be a couple of really big weeks coming on it's going to be kind of chaotic but it's going to be something that you guys want to pay attention to i really appreciate you guys tuning in if you guys haven't already make sure you hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button turn on that bell notification so you get notified when i come out with cool awesome content like this for you to enjoy i appreciate it guys as always you guys stay awesome.